Hello and welcome to Learn Digital Design. This will be our fourth GIMP tutorial. Please visit us on the web at www.learndigitaldesign.com. Welcome back. We're going to start here with GIMP again and we're going to start just the way we did with the last tutorial. There's nothing here in the workspace. So we're going to go to File again, New, and uh, just, we're going to leave this as the defaults here and go to OK. So now we have our new work area here. And we're just going to keep on looking at these different items in the toolbox here. And, uh, you know, we looked at the paintbrush before, so now we're going to next look at the pencil. Well, to be honest with you, the difference between the paintbrush and the pencil is not enough to really worry about, especially at a uh, newbie level. So uh, we're going to skip really talking about anything like that now, and we're going to just move along. So the tool we're actually going to go to now is going to be the selection tool. And it may seem like it's just so simple. It's a box that selects something. Well, let me tell you what. This is not just so simple of a tool. And it's a good thing that it's not so simple. Because there are so many different things that we can do with the selection tool in GIMP that I don't know of any other program that you can that you have you can get uh that has these this flexibility with the selection tool and I know that I opened up just a blank document but what I really probably should have done is just gone ahead and brought in a picture so I'm gonna go ahead and bring a picture in off of my hard drive and we're gonna use the selection tool on it so to do that I'm gonna go to file and I'm gonna close this one and you might think that close means it's just gonna close down GIMP entirely but it doesn't See, I'm gonna not, I'm gonna choose don't save, and it just closed that window, or the canvas area. So now I'm gonna go to file, open, and then I'm gonna go find the uh, find the document that I want to bring in. I'm gonna do that, and I'll meet you back here in just a sec. Okay, and I've brought in this picture here of these two babies. Uh, these are my children. They're uh, a boy and a girl. They're about a year old now. And I'm going to use this picture to uh, use the selection tool. So I've grabbed, I've gone to grab this square selection tool. And, um, you know, let's, you could just grab his head like this. And it, at first glance, it seems like that's all this tool can do. But no. Look at these uh, squares here in the corners you can adjust the size of the selection tool with these corners here and that's very convenient because I mean how many times have you used selection tools in other programs and had to redo it over and over and over again until you get it just right well no longer in GIMP you draw it one time and then you adjust it no worries about getting it just right the first time another cool thing is that you're not just limited to a square hold down the shift key and then you can draw another square now all this area is selected and another and another and another how many however many you want and now all these are selected and just when you thought that that was probably all this tool could do I'm gonna show you something even cooler that it can do look down here in the bottom left hand corner of your work area and you're gonna see this little symbol right here it looks like a dotted line and it's talking about this current selection click there and now you can see that we've got a kind of red opaque opa uh, opaque uh, covering or mask that went over the rest of the area here and you may be wondering what to do with this well you can go over here and grab your paintbrush tool and if you start painting it starts deselecting because the red area is not selected and the rest of this area is selected so you can start deselecting de with the paintbrush and if you have your opacity by pressure turned on on your graphics tablet you need to be careful and either turn that off or keep it you know push down really hard because it's gonna select it can it can not only select but it can partially select you can select as in like with a blur and it's gonna only partially select that area 
<clears throat> and I'm going to show you more about that here shortly. Now you may be wondering, first of all, how do you actually select if the paintbrush deselects what selects? Well, let's go over here, go to the eraser tool. The eraser tool selects. You're basically erasing this red area. So all that I'm touching here with uh, with the eraser is now getting selected. So I can select her face. You know, I can just go through and just select just the babies with this if I like. You know, but just for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm gonna not get carried away here. I'm gonna stop now. And now, if you want to go back to the regular selection style with the dotted lines around the outside, just go back down here to the bottom. And now, remember how it was a dotted line before? Now it's this pink line. Click on it, and now all this area is selected. You can see that I missed a few spots here with my eraser tool, and you could, of course, now go back and fix all that. But uh, now, while this area is selected, what can you do with it? Well, it's basically acting as a mask. Let's go over here and just click on the paintbrush. And let's say we want to start painting. It's only going to paint within the selected area. So, if I want to paint over an area like this, it's only going to paint the selected area. Uh, out here, the paintbrush doesn't work. It'll scare you and make you think that it's deselecting because it'll disappear and come back, but you know, it's still there. You don't have to worry about that. Alright, remember a minute ago when I told you about being able to just partially select something. Let's go up here, go back to our selection tool. I already got it selected. Let's click on feather edges. And you can choose how feathered you want these edges to be. And the reason you might use something like this is, you know, you might not like these hard lines around the edge where the edge of your paintbrush is going to operate. You know, you might want it to just feather, you know, as a gradient off into the background where it's not going to be so noticeable. Let's add to our selection here, holding down the shift key and make another rectangle. And look. It's got these rounded edges, even though I made a rectangle. But it's actually a feathered edge. Let's go back to our paintbrush. Now, you see the effect I'm getting here? It feathers out. This is one effect that you definitely want to know about that will be essential in, in your designs. And there's all kinds of other choices that you have over here. Instead of just holding down the shift key when you want to add a selection, you can click here and now you're adding to the current selection as if you're holding down shift without actually having to hold down shift. Very convenient. You can also use this one where it's going to take away from the current selection. And normally you would hold down control for this. You can even take away from the selection in the middle of the selection. So it can look like Swiss cheese if you want it to. Your selected area can be whatever you want it to be. Whatever dimensions you like. Let's paint in here and see what this looks like. neat huh sorry that I'm drawing all over my kids faces uh, no disrespect to them I'm just uh, using them as a uh, as part of my example here here's another option you have there you can uh, round the corners which would be different than feathering the edges it would round the corners but it would still have a hard edge on it you can expand from center let me turn this off before to show you what I'm talking about first. You see when I draw this it starts where my mouse is and it moves as I drag. Well if you expand from the center 
it's going to start here, but it's going to expand from the center like this. You see the difference? Down here you can have a fixed aspect ratio of your selection area. You can select the position or the size manually without actually having to go over here and do anything with your mouse. So as you see you have an extremely flexible selection tool here with GIMP and uh, I'm gonna cut this lesson off about right here and uh, I will be looking forward to seeing you in the next tutorial. Thanks so much for watching.